Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, I have a new tool from Vivor, and at this point, I'm not sure what it is, because what they normally do is they send me, you know, a list of two or three items that are new that they'd like someone to take a look at, and you pick from it, which I did. I am pretty sure, based on the dimensions of this box, that this isn't that. So I'm kind of curious as to what it is. Now, if you're watching this video, you've already read the title. So it's already past the point when I've opened this and I know what it is, but at this point I have no idea what this is. Um, I normally curate the items that I review. I look for items that are particularly interesting or ones that I think that, are, that look particularly well made because I don't want to give a negative review because first of all, re you know, what's the point of showing a really lousy made tool? Uh, I think it's much more useful to show good tools at a good deal. So I, I seek those out selectively. Um, Vivor is an interesting company. You should check out their website. <laughs> They've got the most eclectic combination of stuff. They go everything from automotive tools to commercial kitchen preparation tools, all the way down to beekeeping. So uh, it's a really interesting catalog to look through. Uh, their website just vivor.com, so check it out. Uh, let's open this guy up and see what they sent me. Whatever it is, it is seriously heavy. The one thing I've noticed consistently about Vivor stuff is the box, the packaging, uh, seems to protect it well enough to survive all the way from China to the United States, which is uh, good because I can't say that for everything I've gotten by any stretch. Sometimes even stuff in the United States uh, isn't strong enough to deal with shipping inside the United States. Oh, okay. Porta Power Jack. Sticker's kind of coming off there. Well, this is a nice plastic case. Let's get this guy out of here. Yeah, it has this nice handle on it here, but it says Team Lift. So, <laughs> interestingly enough, there's only a handle on one side, but there's wheels on the other side, so that should be warning enough, right? On the outside of the case, it says it's a Vivor power, power jack. 10 tons, lifting pressure 10 tons, ejector stroke 135 millimeters. That makes it about five inches, uh, a little bit over. It's a really interesting case. Yeah, it folds along this side. It has wheels on this side, so it's clearly really heavy. I wonder how long that would last if you actually went to use it. Only two latches? No, four latches. Five latches. Okay. Oh, these are quite handy. I don't have a set of these. So this is for working on cars and uh, general lifting requirements. So you could use these spacer arms. They have a, uh, a pump in the middle here and the hydraulic piston here. And you can use all these extension arms that thread together to like hold up a doorway if you're trying to replace a header on a doorway. Uh, it's got a lot of features like working on in a car. These are spreader tips. So you pump it up and uh, these two jaws come apart here. This one's only rated a half ton, that part. That's interesting. They did package it nicely. This apparently comes in four, 10, and 12 ton models. So this is the middle. And I th think, I went and looked this up after I, I saw the name. And I think they also make a 20 ton version of this, but I'm not certain. So there's hydraulic fittings already on the piston, which is nice. Oh, there's a protection, there's a cover. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. So it didn't case it banged around a bit. So I'm gonna take some of this foam off here and I'll be right back. All right, so I got it sort of unbagged there. They've got a soft rubber piece so that you don't uh, put dents, dents in something. That's a neat, uh, neat add-on. And a bunch of different feet that'll slip over the end of this guy here. Uh, oh, is it hollow also? Which means you could pull with it. Oh, but this end's solid. So this end is hollow, but I think that's so you can put things in the end of that as well. 
So I'm looking at these, uh, these feet and accessories. To me, they all look like they're cast iron. Uh, that's a little concerning to me. Oh, well, that's uh, screws on there. It looks like that's also a protective thread thing. Let's see. I like the fact that they protected them during shipping. That's a very nice plus, yeah. So it looks like this guy will go on here in case you wanted to separate, you know, press two things apart. Uh, the threads are nice. Very nice, actually. Oh, this could just press on. <laughs> Interesting. So all these, these feet and accessories, like between this one and this one, put this guy on, put this guy on. You could press two parts, two things apart that are fairly close together and even have this so it nests a little bit. Not completely, that would have been a nice touch. But these look like cast iron, and I think I need to test that because cast iron, to me, I might be wrong, but cast iron seems a little bit risky. Oh, this pin goes in the butt here so that you can put any of these accessories in the rear of this thing as well. Ah, yeah, that's nice. In their description of this parts, these parts are both made out of uh, high strength steel uh, carbon steel, but it looks like a lot of pieces of this are cast iron. Let's give that a quick test. So I thought I'd check and see if this really is cast iron because it looks like it. So I'm going to drill a saw hole through the side here because this part is mostly pushing, so I shouldn't weaken it too much by drilling through the side. I don't want to permanently damage it, but I'm really curious. And I'd say based on those turnings, this is definitely cast iron. I don't need to go any further. I don't know if you can see that, but they're, it's typical cast iron turning. So I think these are cast iron and that has me a little concerned. Uh, someone else can weigh in on that and let me know, but it seems risky on high, uh, high force parts to use cast iron because it can, it's brittle and it gives suddenly rather than deforming and giving you a warning that it's, uh, it might fail. So that's a little concerning, but uh, there's a large combination of accessories here, so why don't we combine them and take a look at that. So the manual on this guy is actually pretty good, and they talk about a bunch of different configurations, and they also tell you how to derate the strength, you know, how much force this should apply safely. Uh, based on those conditions. I'm not quite sure how you work that out when you're actually doing it, but uh, maybe it'll only apply that much force. I don't know. Or you need to be careful not to apply more force than that. So here's one that seemed pretty generic to me that I thought would be really useful. I don't actually need to take this part off yet, but I'll save myself some trouble. Well, just so I don't get off camera, let's see. If... <laughs> Guess what? The hole is too small here. I'm going to have to bore that out to fit. <laughs> oh, that's a problem. Yeah, this hole is too small for this pressing piece. It needs to be bored out. Let's try this one. There we go. That's a good fit. Okay, so here's one example. You can put this on one end, press these two ends apart. Now, I was thinking they actually give you another really long piece like this. You could use this if you're doing framing and you want to hold a header up while you're replacing the uh, side pieces. Uh, that could be really handy. But in a car, obviously, if you're trying to repair dents and things, that, that makes perfect sense and this would work out. Uh, so this is one setup, and I think this is full strength. They actually have a blow up a parts blow up in here, which is kind of nice of all the different accessories. So you can repair it and a parts list. So this is 100% like this. They're saying this is good for a full 10 tons. Uh, if you do it sideways and you replace this piece with say the rubber ball on top, I don't know if you can even see the top of that. If you replace the, the top of this guy with the rubber ball, it's still 100%, horizontal or vertical. If you use that little one, this one, the combination head, I think this is the right one, yeah. This one's only good for 25%. And if you were 
Uh, some accessories they don't have here. They've got uh, ends to clamps, and that's only 12.5%. 12.5% uh, of 10 tons is still pretty darn good, still one and a quarter tons. Uh, if you're using to, the two pieces to press apart, that's only 25% capacity, so that'd be two and a half tons. Why don't we set that one up? Because I'm kind of curious about that, how, that, how that'll all look. So let me, let me grab some pieces here. And you could understand why they need to derate this a little bit potentially because There's a lot of leverage here that's trying to bend these apart. It's not all set up in the same direction. So these two are going to press apart here. You don't need the base piece. I'm just doing that so it's easier for you to see. So that's another configuration. That's good for 25%. There's another accessory that's also not here that's a full 100%, a chain pull plate to pull two chains tightly together. And there's a bunch of other configurations here. Like I said, there is, there's these two pieces here. So if you're pushing, pushing pieces apart and one of them was more delicate and you didn't want to scratch it, you've got this rubber piece, which is pretty heavy duty and uh, won't damage it. That one fits perfectly. The only one that doesn't fit so far, let's see, how about this one? Yeah, that one fits too. It's really interesting that this one, they kind of fooped on the casting. I don't see any obvious burrs in there. Obviously they didn't test this first, but it doesn't even fit over the top. So I could pop this in the lathe and clean that out. But if you're a normal home gamer, you're not gonna easily do that. You have to get there with some sandpaper. That would kind of suck. All right, let's just see how smoothly the jack action is. So the kit comes with the handle that threads in, which is interesting. Usually they just press in, so that's kind of nice. You know, before I get started, I wonder if they even shipped this with the hydraulic fluid in it. Because a lot of times with the Chinese products where they got to ship them overseas, they don't want to leak midway. So they come without fluid. So I'm, I'm going to take a look here. There is fluid in there. It's up about halfway. I'm not sure how full it should be, but uh, I looked on the website and they say it takes 500 grams of fluid, which is an unusual measurement to do mass for fluid rather than volume. The hydraulic fittings themselves are as strange as all the hydraulic fittings seem to be. It's like no two are the same. <laughs> That's not anyone's fault, it seems. It just seems like that's what the industry does. I don't know why. Maybe it's so every manufacturer can keep you locked into their product. We've had this discussion on previous reviews, but uh, that's kind of insane if you ask me. The threaded part that holds the two steel parts together is aluminum on this, so I don't know about longevity on that guy. So if I'm not mistaken, this is the valve that uh, shuts this guy off or lets it to control where the fluid's going. I guess I should look. Release valve. So I don't know, maybe it doesn't have enough fluid in it because I got to tell you, it's pumping. Feels like it's pumping nothing. Oh, there it goes. I guess it had air in the lines, which is not good. Probably want to release that somehow. Yeah, you can see there's air in the line. So it takes a lot of pumps, but uh, that gives you some fine control, and that's how they get a relatively small pump to apply a lot of pressure. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that, uh, that's putting a lot of force there. And it's spring returns. That's nice. All right. That's reacting a little bit more immediately the second time, but there's still air in it. So, let me see. Yep, 
if I were to put this guy down here, would, it, would the air bubbles rise? So I've got it on the ground sitting on its side, pumping it all the way out, which is a lot of strokes, to see if maybe the air bubbles will come up, you know, flow upstream, as it were, or rise. Okay. Okay, that sounded like I was getting air back up here, so let's bring this guy back up. See how it is now. Oh yeah, hey, that got the air out. So the trick was I set this guy well below this, lying on its side so that the air bubbles could come up this way, uh, pumped it all the way out, released it, the spring returned, the piston pushed all the fluid, and the bubbles rose through the tube, it seems, and back in here, and now there's no, no pressure. <laughs> Those pop off kind of easily. So that worked pretty well. Let's try, let's try the spreader tip. That one's rated at a half ton. So I can see that uh, you'll have to replace hydraulic fluid after using this a few times because every time you take this fitting off a little bit of fluid comes out that's probably normal i would think but maybe not i couldn't actually tell you because again not a professional hydraulics guy all right so this go oh, that works really quickly that's fantastic i could see you wanting to use that Want to spread two things apart that are stuck that could be a really handy piece this one doesn't have much air in it and they're auto returning that's pretty good all right so it's a really nice set as far as the number of components it includes uh, it comes with an awful lot of accessories the uh, plastic fittings here don't hold that all too well this is supposed to fit here it doesn't really sit in i think there's a larger diameter than they plan for the f it comes with an awful lot of accessories i have a concern that they're made out of cast iron so uh, someone knows more than i do give me some feedback on that because i'd love to hear what you think the set is fairly complete i can see a lot of uses for it the price is i'm going to look it up after i do this video so the price is this look below here um, i suspect that this price is probably about maybe one-tenth the price of an Enterpack equivalent, if Enterpack does make an equivalent. Um, sometimes you get what you pay for. Well, a lot of times you get what you pay for. Uh, but if you're not going to use this every day, if you're doing like a one-off thing and you need to be able to spread two parts of a car frame out or bumper or any other part you're working on, you're not doing it every day, this might be the perfect solution for you. I suspect this is just a little over a hundred bucks. I would guess the inner pack would be way over a thousand and these accessories would be mostly extra. Um, this can be a really handy tool for more than just automotive work. Again, I, I have concerns about these all being cast iron parts. Uh, please weigh in on that. So think about that. There was this part that did not fit at all. So that's a kind of a bummer in their QCing there. Uh, but overall, the set's probably worth it if you're only going to use it once in a while. If you're using it every day, you should have a whole different uh, uh, decision matrix to decide whether this is for you. So thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.